Okay, you might want to sit down for this one. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and in this video, we're introducing you to string theory. What if I told you everything you know about the universe might be wrong? Fundamental particles, the fundamental building blocks that make up anything and everything, well, they're not real. Or at least they're not point-like concepts we grew up with. When you zoom into a proton, there are quarks. Zoom in a bit more, and there's nothing. What if instead of leptons, like electrons and quarks, the fundamental building blocks of our universe are strings. Well, of course it's strings. It's literally in the name, tiny vibrating strings. These strings are incredibly small, much smaller than atoms, and that's why we can't see them. But not only do they make up our fundamental particles, but they also make up our forces of nature, gravity, electromagnetism, and the weak and strong forces. It's what we've all been working for, really, a unified theory of everything, potentially explaining all particles and fundamental forces as emergent phenomena arising from the vibration of strings. The way a string vibrates will determine what kind of particle or force it is, and also its properties, like mass and charge. Just like how different ways you pluck a guitar string, you produce different sounds, in string theory, different vibrations of the string produce different particles, or even forces. The only difference here is there is no one doing the plucking. The vibrations are just an inherent property of the strings themselves, like a charge on an electron. Maybe this vibrational pattern makes an electron, and this vibrational pattern makes up a quark. Mathematically, string theory is a very elegant solution to many problems. If the smallest thing is a zero-dimensional point, then you'll get singularities and infinities when trying to model their interactions. But if instead the smallest thing is a string, then interactions are spread out over a small but finite area. And this spread is what avoids the infinities that plague point-like particle theories. There are believed to be two types of strings, open strings and closed strings. Although some theories even suggest that the two types might be related, that they can turn into one another. Open strings are those with two distinct endpoints, and the vibrations of these strings are thought to correspond to the particles that mediate the fundamental forces, except for gravity. So like the photon for the electromagnetic force and the gluon for the strong nuclear force. In some versions of string theory, open strings are confined to move within multi-dimensional objects known as brains. Closed strings form a loop, a tiny circle with no endpoints. Vibrations of closed strings are associated with the gravitons, the hypothetical quantum particles that mediate the force of gravity. Gravity is a very different force compared to other fundamental forces. It interacts with everything, even massless particles like photons, and it has a very weak strength. The mathematical properties of closed string vibrations seem to match these characteristics of gravity, and this is what makes string theory a potential candidate theory of quantum gravity to unify quantum mechanics with general relativity and solve this ongoing conundrum. Strings are quantum phenomena. Like I said, they're believed to be incredibly small, on the order of the Planck length, which is about 1.6 times 10 to the minus 35 meters. This scale is so small small, we can't even measure it. It's so small! The energies required to explore the Planck length are far beyond what current particle accelerators like the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC, can achieve. Now, this is one of the reasons why testing string theory is so hard. This length scale is where the effects of quantum gravity become significant, where the forces unite, and maybe where space-time gets quantized, leading to a discrete rather than a continuous structure of the universe. But there's a problem, or maybe it's a blessing. While we're familiar with three dimensions of space and one of time, these aren't enough for string theory to work mathematically. String theory requires at least 10 dimensions, 
and as many as 26. These hidden dimensions should be curled up in a way that they're too small to be observed. But this is really nice because these additional dimensions would then offer a way to explain why we don't see certain forces or particles under normal conditions. They must be hidden within these compactified dimensions. The way these extra dimensions are shaped and compactified will influence the vibrational patterns of strings, which in turn determines the properties of fundamental particles and consequently lead to different physical constants and forces that can be observed in our four dimensional universe. So despite the energies and scales involved, despite us not being able to resolve Planck length to physically see these strings, it may still be possible to validate aspects of the theory through observational physics. If extra dimensions exist, as predicted by string theory, it could lead to the modification of gravity at very short distances. Then precision measurements of gravity on the micron scale or smaller could reveal deviations from the expected behavior and be a clue. Scientists are actively working on this, measuring gravity at smaller and smaller scales. Another thing is that we know that normally black holes form on the death of a massive star, but due to the extra dimensions in string theory, the energy threshold to form a black hole could be much lower. Low enough that we could make them in a lab. Particle accelerators like the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC, would smash particles together at incredibly high energies, high enough that they could theoretically lead to the formation of a microscopic black hole. Now, the immense gravity and tiny size of these black holes would again be too difficult to see directly, but we could look for signs of their evaporation through a process known as Hawking radiation. This radiation would have specific characteristics that could potentially be distinguished from other phenomena at the LHC. If you're worried though, please don't be, these black holes would evaporate almost instantaneously. So they shouldn't be a threat. Now lastly, another thing we can look for in the LHC is for supersymmetric particles. String theory naturally incorporates supersymmetry, a new kind of symmetry between different types of particles. It means that every particle that we know of has a super partner with the same properties except for a difference in spin by a half. These haven't been discovered yet. Observing supersymmetric particles would be a major confirmation of string theory as a viable theory of everything. Right now, string theory is just a mathematical construct, something that looks pretty on paper, but has no experimental evidence for. It's still very much under development and people are still working on it. And it's also evolving into different extensions like M theory, brain theories, and loop quantum theory. But this is all I have time for this week. Thank you so much to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe. Hey, space cats, fly with me to the stars, faster than light. Soaring past Mars, unveiling the cosmos, new worlds to explore.